at 6.30 will be uh, City Council Special Call Meeting. Please come to order. Today is Monday, September the 23rd, 2013. If you will, please stand and uh, Council Ms. Jennings. <laughs> Certainly, Father, we give thanks for this blessed day. We give thanks for our life on this earth. We give thanks for our people and family. Lord, we ask that you be with us this evening as we do the duties of the city and we think of all of those concerned. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Are there any citizens communicating? Then we will go to a public hearing. Uh, we have a public hearing to hear comments for or against the City of Van Alstein tax rate and announce the date, time, and place of the meeting to vote on the tax rate. Are there any comments at this time? Second call for comments. Third and final call. Uh, in our packet, the tax rate will be September the 23rd, six, probably 6.35, at the community center at our, regular, our next meeting. Is that correct? The 26th, which will be Friday at 6.30 p.m. Oh, okay. Next door at the fire department. 26th, and it's going to be at the fire department? I'm sorry, 27th. It's right here. Friday, 27th, uh -huh. 6.30 p.m., right next door at the fire station. And they're going to be having the library book sale in here. Yes, I know. I don't know. Okay. September the 27th, 6.30 at the fire department. <coughs> Next we have a public hearing to your comments for or against the City of Van Austin water wastewater utility rate increase. Are there any comments regarding this? Second call for comments. Third and final call. Since there are no comments, I declare this public hearing closed. Item 7. Consider and take any action necessary regarding passage of an ordinance adopting new rates for water, sewer, bulk water, solid waste, and fire sprinklers. Uh, the ordinance was not in our packet, but it was on the uh, table in front of you. Uh, has council had an opportunity to go over the ordinance? We had the one in our packet. The, the thing of public of notice hearing on proposed water, wastewater utility rate increases. And the numbers there don't match up with the numbers that are in the... That's correct. Well, Jennifer sent to Julie, didn't have the correct numbers in it, and got back, got published, put it in the packets. So what is right here is, is the correct numbers. So if you'll take a moment and digest, this is what we've discussed, and this is what was uh, proposed. So the one on the table is the new rate? Yes, ma'am. New and correct one? Yes, ma'am. charge and volume charge rates for water connections servicing fire sprinkler systems will be $32 when there is no consumption. Yes ma'am. So they will be charged $32. This is only for connecting, it's not every month. This is their monthly base charge. So once they put in a sprinkler system they will be charged $32. If it's a month. When there it says 
system will be $32 when there is no consumption. So they will be charged. That's, that's ordinance a, 685. 685 is one that's being um, repealed. So the correct rate would be. No, the correct fire sprinkler rate is on page three of four at the very front of your packet and it's 4024 as long as there's no consumption. It's plot. That's the right? 4024 is no, the base. If they are 4024. All right, if they are connected to a fire sprinkler system, then their water bill, will, they will pay a $40.24 monthly fee plus, and that's if the sprinkler system is not used. Same thing as last year. Forty twenty-four. Now that's in the in the package, not the one that's on the page. Second second page will we'll be sitting right out front. So what's right? What came right on top of your agenda for updated agenda for Friday? It'll be on the second page. It's a third page actually. Right here, it's forty twenty-four. Uh, okay, as far as the okay, as far as sprinkler connections. So it'd be section two D three one two D monthly minimum charge and volume charge rate for water connections serving fire sprinkler systems should be forty twenty four when there is no consumption in the event that consumption is detected for a connection servicing a fire sprinkler system, the fee will automatically revert to the monthly minimum charge based on the meter size. And this is the correct one because on five of five, it's required. It's going to require your signature, Mayor. And then the next ones are the older rates that are being repealed. Okay, what's a business has? Fire suppression system out of business, so they they get a bill for forty twenty four for both each one. So they're eighty. Well, the fire sprinkler system has to be on a dedicated line, right? So that and then they get another bill for their for whatever system. whatever their their municipal now, consumption. You is. say if consumption is detected, then it goes to the their their bill that month if they service the suppression system. If they have a test or they, they flush the line or anything then like it, that. Then they, for that month, they have to pay? They have to pay whatever it is, whatever size meter they have, and the consumption is to take. And those are all four inch lines, right? No, there's two inch, there's four inch, there's three inch. It just depends on which system. Okay, so if they have a four inch line, yes, sir. then they would pay $1,000. 1005 would be the base rate. To have their system tested. And plus whatever the gallonage would be, which is a number two. All right. The two systems downtown are full inch, aren't they? I don't believe so. I mean, there's the one, the one going over in the Notre Dame is what size? Is that three inch or four inch? That was a four inch because they put in two twos and that didn't pass. That's right. That didn't pass the rest of so. And then the one that's going into Sheet boutique. Six. I believe that's a six. I thought it was a four. I believe it's a four. Because I seem to remember us, the big issue was you know, fitting a six inch meter and was a six inch meter right. warranted. Now, six. Our fire is that a six? Is it really? And so is, and so is uh, McDonald's. That was the data we got off of the serial number. Didn't look like it, but it seemed to be. Well, I saw it. Six, six McDonald's and one. I looked at it when the McDonald's was open and there were four inch lines. Not one on the corner. Hmm. Okay. But that was just information I would check out. I don't know if it is or not. No. Well, I believe he's right because I think it was two twos. They tried to do two twos and it wasn't going to, you're not going to get the same gallons and the same volume, it, the restriction through two twos that you so wouldn't put a four. Because it it doubles it doubles in size instead of it just I mean instead of it just 
increases by two, it increases. Inside stuff says, but it was only a four inch line. I'm not sure. So, did, did fire suppression systems have to be serviced annually? Yes, sir. Certified. So, for a cost of $1,000 a year to handle this system. Plus 40. Yeah, it was a little bit of a I don't think I don't think we've got a six and four line to tap into downtown anymore. I believe the line going into <coughs> what's caterpillar now is a six inch line for their suppression system. Well, that might be six, I don't know. Was the, was the line starting, maybe that's the six inch. What's that? So the, the line going down the alley, maybe it was six inch. And it was, I know the meter's either four or six. I believe it's a four. I think it is. What? <clears throat> so oh, they don't have much consumption when you service them. Well, you've got to flush the system. You flush the system, and it's got to run long enough for the clapper valve to actuate. So typically it is quite a bit, quite a bit of water. Can, uh, can we not have the fire sprinkler uh, whenever they do have flow for an annual test, mm -hmm. can it just be based upon how much water they use versus it jumps up to a thousand bucks? That's up to council. I mean, if that's what y'all want to change it to, we certainly can. The thing that the, what we agreed to last year is exactly what, what we put on paper for this year. And that's just to cost two hundred and seventy dollars a month for meeting for a fire suppression system. And that was changed back down to to just the three quarter of the rate. Because even even at this rate, I mean it's it's, it's typically less than half of what they what they would have paid like two years ago. Well, I think that's I think that's fair. I'm just concerned about the all of a sudden they do an annual inspection that's required and it's a thousand bucks. Yes, sir. But most I mean everybody that put one in. I mean we haven't had any new systems since then. I mean since we implemented this last year budget, everybody that, that has a system was made aware of, of what when they would be when they would be charged and what they would be charged. So that way, I mean, we can notify them and send them, let them know what the increase is going to be, so that way they can plan for it and try and budget for it. Um, it's, I mean, but it's really whatever council wants to do, we can, we can modify it. Is everybody getting their annual inspections? Or, it should be. It's, uh, I mean, the state fire marshal keeps those records as well as us. And the companies that are that are required to do it have to turn that information into the state. So it's in their best interest to, to go ahead and follow up on that as well. But, and there's yeah. there's some there's some there's some the companies do it because that's their revenue maker. So they typically don't skip uh, on anybody, and they not only have to turn that information into him, but they also have to turn it into the state. Do we have anything that tracks to make sure that they're doing it? Um, not currently in the past, some of the stuff we've implemented um, will be tracking all of it electronically um, with some of the new software that we've gotten over the past year that will <coughs> go in effect in the next couple months. Um, it'll help us keep better track of that. And our, our big issue that we have is just staff. We have just got two more inspectors just recently on the Released from school and passed all their certifications. So a big part of it is it minimal staffing to do is really can't really say we're just going to do annual inspections on sprinkler systems. We got to do it on every business until we get the staff up to training and get a schedule going. It's kind of hard. 
with the new software the upgrades that Firehouse did, where you put in the annual inspection when it was inspected last, and they put up the flag for you. We basically schedule them every year out so that we'll be on, they'll tell us all the stuff, keep all the data. And so as a record of the inspections kept at City Hall, so that if you wanted to know when the last inspection was done on a particular building, the record would be there. Typically, there's they'll make a copy. There's there's a copy on file at City Hall. How many systems do we have in town? How many systems do we have in town? Mm -hmm. We've got the two we spoke of. We've got the one out of Caterpillar. We've got the one at the intermediate school. Our Brahms. Have a handful. Not many. Are any of the systems on the pump? Are they all fairly good? Uh, the one out of the intermediate school is on the pump. The pump. Yes, sir. What about Grayson? Uh, Grayson's system doesn't have a pump on it. New building. Is it? The, new, the new building will have a job. I mean, I had the plans. I mean, unless they, unless our pressure increases or something happens, then they may, may have to. They'll do a system. They'll do a pressure test right before they, they get ready to put it in. Caterpillar's got a pump. Yep, Caterpillar's got to put a pump on their system. Because with the rack storage that they implemented, they had, there's a larger demand to protect all, all the uh, inventory that they have. And so with the rack system, it can increase the demand of water that they're going to have to insulate in the pump system as well. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Based on these rates, how much are we going to end up with in the, I can't remember what they call it, fund? Depreciation. Depreciation? 94500 94000 What, you've already got 60000 of it? Set up to be spent, or is that not true? That's if that's if the lift funding comes through. And okay. When we get to, when we get to that point in the budget, then we'll, we'll talk about where we are as far as the lift concerned and who else is Okay. <coughs> in our average. User is 67,000 gallons? Yes, sir. Okay. So on every user, you'll see a 15% increase. Six, six to 7,000, yes, sir. Okay. Around 15%. Okay. 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 Yes, sir, but on the... It is an 8% increase in the bottom. I understand, but, but that, what Billy's talking about is at, at 7,000, 7, 8,000 gallons for the average consumer, mm -hmm. it is it is going to be right at 15%. What, 7,000 gallons? Yes, sir. But yeah. at 5,000, you're right. It's, it's still... It's just yeah, I was talking about an average... The average person would go from 9029 up to 104 11.
sewer, bulk freight, solid water, and fire sprinkler. Councilman Clay, do you have any more questions? I just uh, <coughs> feel like we're putting you know too much burden on the water system to pay for everything. So I mean, I'd like to see it lower. Do you have a suggestion? I uh, originally, the council members. well, my original thoughts were that we don't have any depreciation money, that we get depreciation money if we have overabundance of uh, comes in from tap fees or building houses or additional houses being built and using water and that kind of stuff, that we could do that, you know, out, keep the funds separate and, and do it that way, and we wouldn't know what we're coming up with. But. This is the only concern I got is with the fire sprinkler systems uh, an annual fee of which by state code four inch is the minimum and it, some of these that's a lot of money a thousand bucks annually I'm really I just hate for us to penalize our uh, businessmen for putting in a fire sprinkler system that doesn't get used and the second part of that is because I work in the industry the majority of, of uh, cities especially for individual businesses don't require meters when there's large developments like off Stacy Road where there's a bunch of they do master meters and whatnot, but you know, we got small, a lot of small businesses. I'm just, I'm thinking from my perspective, if I moved in to a store downtown, I would want a fire sprinkler system. <coughs> if I wasn't getting the, uh, and I know a lot of these owners down here, they don't always get the cash flow to break even every month. And then annually they've got to come up a thousand bucks plus the fee for the fire sprinkler service that ha that has to do the inspection um, I, I'm really I, I don't like it okay councilman Jennings do you have any concerns what is what is the current Minimum charge for a four inch meter in the city. $1,591. No, I mean the monthly, what is the minimum monthly charge or charge to have a four inch meter? $413.40 for four inch. So they're paying four thirteen a month right now for a four inch meter, whether it's used or not. Um on a fire sprinkler system yes. they're not because the rate is the way it's structured is similar to what's proposed where they pay $32 it, it's the same wording they pay $32 when there's no consumption and then when consumption is detected it, it would then go to 413.40 wait I think you said 42 call it instead of the new 4024 is the proposed the rate So there was no so there was no rate higher for four inch meter prior. They played the same base meter rate that everyone else paid. As far as the four thirteen forty prior to last year, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's four thirteen forty. I thought it was closer to two something two years ago. Two or three years ago, it was two hundred and seventy dollars a month. Or she was running for because that's what McDonald's. Well, everybody that had a sprinkler system paid two hundred and seventy dollars a month. So that so it was reduced two years ago. Right. So see the the business owners had a reduction two years ago. And it, if you used or had consumption, it was four thirteen forty. So the delta now is only six hundred dollars. So we're not talking about a thousand dollars. We're talking about six hundred dollars increase. About something is correct.
Russell's right. But the cities are starting to adopt and go to a single meter system. We, we do some deal with project that way. But that's not the case we have here. I think my thoughts are that if we went from two, two something a month two years ago and reduced it to 30 something, and we're going back to a thousand upon consumption. And they had consumption was 400. 113 is only $600 delta, so you're talking about on average $50 a month increase. This is what the increase is. I don't have an issue with that. Yes, sir. Uh, we went from the $270 a month down to $32. Try to be realistic with property owners. So this <coughs> that. Um, if you own a building and you have to pay a thousand dollars a year, you got to pass that on, and that means another hundred dollars a month for rent that you got to charge to cover your cost. I just you're you're already paying five hundred dollars a year for the meter on the forty twenty four rate. You're paying five hundred dollars a year to have access to that water and to tack another thousand on them. that that could be a lot of money for business. Granted they have spent thousands and thousands of dollars to put a system in and they get insurance breaks because they have that. But I, I don't see penalizing a business after they've already paid five hundred dollars a year for or something that hasn't used to charge another class. I just don't, I think, I think if there is consumption, you charge it for consumption on the rate that they pay in the month. Okay. 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 I'm not, as, you, as I've stated all along, not in favor of an increase in the water rates since we had a big increase last year. So I just don't go along. Whether the council members have voiced their concerns at this time, time if there is a change to the line of sales ordinance, then I will ask for a motion by Councilor Clark and Councilor Carver. I'm not in favor of the water rates. Uh, Councilor Moore has the annual code rates and fire sprinklers and that they are going to a single meter system and Councilor Jennings uh, does not have a problem with the ordinance system. And I, and I stated that correctly. Okay, at this time, if there is a change, is there a motion from the, from anyone on the council of a uh, uh, change they would like to see made in this ordinance? I will start with Council and <coughs> Councilman Clay, we have a motion that you would like to present to the council regarding this ordinance. I, I would just like to make a motion that we lower it back to where the depreciation fund shows zero. I, I, will you repeat that, please? The depreciation. Uh, I would like to make a motion that we return <coughs> the depreciation amount back to zero the instead of 90, 94000 <laughs> Whatever that does. To zero. Okay. Uh, is there a second to that motion? I'd like to know. I'm so glad. So what will that do to the rate? Well, we, we need. To we, well, first we need a vote. second, and then we we'll have a discussion. I'd, I'd like to see what it. I'd like to plug the zero in and see what it does before the second. Yeah. Um, well, likewise, that's usually when you have a motion, you have a second, and then we'll plug it in and see. Do <laughs> uh, because without a second, the motion dies. So I will ask our attorney, am I not correct in without a second, the motion dies, and you have a second, and then we have a discussion of it? Uh, yes, whoever makes the second can withdraw their Second, second later. Okay. And, we have, and whoever made the motion could also withdraw their We motion. have a motion from Councilman Clay. Is there a second? I'll second it. And a second by a Councilwoman. 
uh, Tarmer. Uh, now I will open this up for council's discussion. Uh, Councilman Clay, is there anything that you would like to discuss with your motion? Uh, I just want to see what it does, which I think we just did, and it will mean that the average that actually most the the ones that are the lower users the older people look like they actually will get a one percent decrease in their rates is that what that means and the next level up will get a three percent increase and the one you're concerned about stays the same well, the one I was concerned about was is this under, my biggest one I was concerned about was under $5,000. Is, is this factored in to anything up there, this five or $6,000 worth of, of this $1,000 fee for consumption on five sprinkler systems? As far as the meters are concerned? Is, no. That, well, we will generate five or six thousand, seven thousand, whatever it is. No, sure. it, that's not factored it's in. It's so nominal, it's, it's not something that's factored into this. Okay. I mean, with only having a handful of systems in the city, it's not something that's factored in. So that could be dropped and not affect that at all, right? If that's what you all wanted to do. I mean, yes, if, if, if we did no, drop you're, it, you're, it wouldn't affect that. You're right. Okay. Councilman, uh, no. do you have any comments? motion or question I guess I'm the only thing that has been because I'm the one that first brought this up about seeing it at zero uh, and since further thinking about it I guess the only concern that I I have with doing that is that means we get we really have to hope that we get all the consumption and and everything in, otherwise we are negative. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Councilman Jones. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I think we have to have the, the increase. I think it's foolish not to on an annual basis. Not to <coughs> returning to, to zero. Keep it, well, yeah, no, to keep it where it was, the 97, you know, quarter, 94, whatever it was. Um, our auditor recommended that, and that, that is some very valuable advice that, that she gave us to, to create that fund. So we'll add money to do that. Now, if I understand, uh, Billy, your comments were that at a certain point, uh, what, if so many houses or so were built, then everything over and above is that part of your. I, I was. I, this is based on 45 new houses. Out 45, there. yeah. And, and and the prediction is that they everybody keeps telling us we're going to get more than 45 houses. So, so if, it if goes we up. get more than 45 houses, then that that extra, you know, uh, the I can't think of what you call the two fees that we charge. Tap the tap fees, and, yeah, those will be added in additional, which will allow that depreciation fund to build up. Yeah, and we can do something like that to where we would hopefully that way we don't have to put ourselves in a situation where we're relying upon the people to pay for it, we're gonna let the new people pay for it. That's my theory, anyway. May not work, but it's a theory, okay. And that is your that is what your motion is, for yes, you. okay. Okay, we have uh, discussed it, uh, and each one has had an opportunity. Is, are there any other com any further comments? Uh, I'll make one more comment on the, on the fire suppression system. Mm -hmm. right. we're, we're going to stick with this one first. Well, we, we've got a motion in a okay. second, so we have to stay with this one, but we're going to come back for that. Okay. So, right now we have one motion and a second, and we have had a general discussion for that. So if the motion in the second stands, then I will call for a vote on this one motion. This does not pertain to the fire or the other. This was... May I yes. make a point of clarification? So the motion isn't approving the ordinance. You're just voting on the rates themselves I'm just, right now. Yes, just the change. change in the depreciation is zero. Okay. Yes, the, just the change. That's all. For, for up to 45 houses. Well, it's well, that's scripted. what that's no, based on. Move yeah. it back to zero. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's what that's, that's based what it, on. That's yeah. the only thing that this motion is about. Right. We have a motion and a second. 
All those in favor of this motion, please raise your hand. Two are in favor, against, <coughs> raise your hand, and three against. Your motion has failed. The next concern that the <coughs> that was voiced had to do with the fire sprinkler and the uh, annual coke rate, if I am correct in that, and uh, that it would uh, go up to uh, another thousand dollars. So uh, now I we will uh, address that issue uh, in that the four inch meet the meters and the the uh, annual fire sprinkler rate. This was a concern of yours, Councilman Moore. Would you like to, uh, do you have a motion pertaining to this that you would like to recommend to Council? I guess my biggest thing is I'm trying to get a, a good understanding of what's the purpose? What's the purpose of just charging them a thousand bucks when they have an annual inspection that they only use 500 gallons of water. The purpose is, I mean, again, the water's commodity. We need to treat it as such. If it's used just to flush out a system and move the actuator so that way we get the alarm. So you show that the system work, works annually. I mean, water's water, we need to treat it like it is. And so, we need to charge a consumption now, but you are giving that. But as far as the meter size, meters on the larger meters, the four inch and the larger meters, they only flip over after so many hundred, you know, hundred gallons, a hundred gallons goes through. Uh, ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand gallons. Oh, a thousand gallons. A thousand gallons. So it's three. So three three, three, three. Okay. So depending on what size meter it is. If they test that system that year, and it's one of the smaller systems, like one of the buildings downtown, they may not flip over to that next digit in that calendar year. It may, it may do it two or three years from now, depending on how much the, the alarm company runs through that system. So, yes, the increase out of 12 months with one month, if they don't have a fire and they just had the system tested, the increase from last year to this year would be 683.15 on that bus. So I guess what we're getting at is we treat the meter as it is. I understand what you're saying as far as Fairview is concerned and some of the cities down south of us not having a meter on their system. The issue that's been, that's been run into in cities like that that have gone to where they haven't required a meter on the system is unscrupulous tenants, not all tenants, but unscrupulous tenants will go in and tap into that free water off that main and they'll run that to a certain number of fixtures within, within the structure. It's not rampant, but it does happen. And the whole reason we put meters on the systems here is to prevent that. Um, but again, you know, the only way we're going to detect that is if they have tapped it and they are using it for regular consumption, then those meters that will flip over that thousand and we will be able to detect if they are having to have a legal tap. So as far as it being tested every year, and possibly even on the, small, on the smaller systems, them flipping that digit and being charged that thousand dollars, or the, the increase of six eighty three fifteen, if it flipped that digit last year, it may or may not happen. So that's kind of what you need to weigh into it. I mean, they, they are paying for that meter, and the thing about it is, if anything happens now that it's our meter, if anything happens to that meter and it fails or it gums up or something like that, and we have to replace it. And all they've been paying annually is forty twenty four. We're not going to recoup the cost of having to replace that meter. Am I wrong or am I right? Okay. I, I'm just trying to give you where, where we are, and that's why we incorporated that into the test. Is so that way, if something did happen, if the meter just sat there and didn't didn't function, we could we could offset that cost if we have to replace it. So it's not really for us. It's not really a money maker or money generator. It's just trying to offset the cost. In case we have to replace that meter because it becomes ours once it's set. So their annual tests with these big meters, they may not actually show a flow that generates that much a charge. It may it may be every other year, it may be every third year, but it comes down to what are they what are they how much water are they running through that system when they flush it and how much water is in it because 
you have to do it on the most remote branch on that system test on the most remote branch of that system is where you have to have your spigot and so all the water in that system has to run out for that clapper to move to actuate the alarm so depending on how much volume is in that system will we'll tell you whether it's going to flip that meter or not that kind of so that was, kind of, that was kind of the philosophy and the rationale we came up with when we were talking two years ago about going back to, okay, we're trying to incentivize people putting in sprinklers and not make it to where it's, it's a high dollar venture. It is a high dollar venture, but the savings that they're going to see on insurance, so we would like to see something offset that. Where's the middle ground? The middle ground is, okay, we have to replace a meter. We need, we need to kind of have that, okay, well, you know, we test it once a year. If it goes over, it flips over. You know, there's there's that cost because those, those things aren't cheap. And, and I know you know that from when you put them in. Sixteen hundred, and that's what that just paid for. There we go. I thought she paid eight hundred. Was it thirteen? Like, no, like thirteen ninety three sticks out in the mind. And <laughs> think how often do those meters that sit there get? Some may run 20 years, 25 years, and never have a problem, and some may run five years. That, that meter it got this is mm -hmm. brand spanking new, had to be replaced two weeks later. Okay. Don't know, it's probably so it didn't work from the beginning, but, <laughs> but I mean, that, that there would be warranty by the manufacturer, right? You still would have, you still got the cost to put it in. What is it like for warranty on those things? It's 30 days, 90 days, 90 days, and yeah, depending on the manufacturer. So, we got lucky. We didn't have to eat that one because it was covered. Of course, the uh, meter's going up because we get away from no lead, brass, so everything with no lead is three times higher than something that had lead in it. I'm finding that in just regular meters now. So the comparison of what we what they were paying now is equivalent to fifty dollars a month, six hundred two correct. Six hundred eighty three dollars a year was a delta between So as far as just the base rate without the consumption, what I've calculated eleven months. 11 months at $32, and this is where we are currently. 11 months at $32 plus one month at 413.40 at a four inch meter, ended up at 765.40 versus on the new rate, 40.24 and a four inch of 1,005.91. That comes to out of 12 months, 1448.55 if it clicks over for a thousand gallons. And so the difference in that is 683.15. And then, if Jennifer's number's right, and it is 1300 to replace that meter, uh, which that's, <coughs> then that 1448 is barely, barely going to get us there as far as this going out, labor from that thing in there, pulling the old one out and everything. So. But we have that every year coming in. Yeah. So we have to have that every year. Well, it's, it's all going, it, that's going in enterprise fund. It's not going in special fund for, for anything else. So, it's not like the, the impact fee fund. The impact fees will go in a separate fund and we'll have to identify specifically what we're going to use those budgeted funds on, even though we've got it incorporated into this. last uh, 20 years, then we've made a killing, right? We still go out there and look at it. <laughs> yeah, but that's a whole lot yeah. different than uh, the cost of a new one <coughs> and, uh, yeah. uninstalling and installing. It doesn't cost any more to read that meter than it does the one that Actually, some, that, some of them are pretty tough because we have to go down in bottles. Well, I, I realize that. Then, of course, that makes it a little higher on what we got. But, it's still, it's, you're still getting you're still $40 you're still for, for nothing. Yeah. 
um, it's still different than, I mean, it, it take, it's a bigger meter. The logistics are harder to do to change it out. Yes, I understand that. But you're still getting $500 a year from revenue. Right. Are they uh, the ones that are radio that you can read without going down into balls or whatever? Well, that radio meter read, that was not even the same meter. So you can multiply that times three what that actually would cost. We still have to hand read those. It's the three uh, 17, 1800 residentials that would be the time saving on that. And then five or six that we got, it's not killing us on the time. It's just having to find one in it. Council, no more. Do you have any more questions? Concerns? Mm -hmm. okay. Council, James. Still satisfied. Yes. 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 I think it's too high. I wouldn't know what to put it down to. I don't understand the whole mechanics of it. I have a question. Can you come back? You can come, come back. back. When a business is required to put a fire system in, is the city purchasing the meter that goes in that line, or is the business owner purchasing the meter that goes in that line? Business. Business. The business owner. That's it. So. The experience I have is that any meter to the city, any any business owner, any any meter over two inches, in my experience, you're required to purchase. What's what's the city's policy? Uh, people on the new buildings, they buy them in themselves. We just have to watch that. Watch that. Uh, Testing of the meter when they install it. Now, I, I agree. I think if they buy the meter, we shouldn't be charging the meter. Mm -hmm. it's, I agree with that. Is somewhat, uh, that's not included in our budget process, the red meter. So, you know, I'd be of the opinion we should take that to just charge for consumption. Do these meters have detector check meters on them, or they just seen the meters? Uh, they do. Some of them do. So if, we, if we had to take a check, we wouldn't run into the issue that Frank talks about with the unload volumes. If we required that and we put a fire system in, we would know what that consumption is, even if it was going down. Well, I think on some businesses it's the same meter, and then uh, on the schools and stuff, I think it's small meter on the side. Do you want to put that concern in the motion? I make a motion that we adopt the rates. Uh, as specified here would be depreciation that we drop the we leave the minimum charge as is for fire systems and the only consumption charge and no increase in base rate upon testing upon testing that's <coughs> Seconded by Councilman Smith. Councilman Pike, do you have any discussion regarding this? Nope. Councilman Mower, any discussion? No, I think that's fair. Councilman <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to discuss your motion? No. <laughs> Councilman Smith. I have my mind in my mind. Okay. Councilman I am much happier with this. Okay, we have a motion, a second. There is no discussion. All of those in favor of this motion, please raise your hand. All of those opposed? Thank you. Uh, motion passed with one opposed. So that ordinance will be changed. I didn't think it was all the time.
different. Okay. Are there any other council? Are there any other changes that you can see that is a change in this ordinance? Is there any other uh, changes in this ordinance that you uh, have concerns about with the new uh, water sewer, bulk water, solid waste <coughs> recovery? Are there any other concerns regarding this, uh, Councilwoman Tiger? Councilman Smith? Councilman Jennings? Councilman North? Councilman Blake? No. Okay. Um, then is there a motion that we adopt this with the changes in the ordinance uh, 685 which pertains to uh, Mr. Jennings, the motion that was just passed. I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance with the change. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Tarver? No. And this is at the depreciation rate of 94500 correct? Yes. Councilman Blake? No. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All of those in favor, please raise your hand. All of those opposed? Motion passed. Three yes, two no. Okay, we will move on to item 8. Consider and take any action necessary regarding passage of an ordinance establishing fees for the library service. This was in your packet at the back, and the fees are on the last, the, the ordinance was there, and the fees were on the last page. Uh, do we have any uh, questions regarding this? And we'll start with Councilman Jennings. Do you have any questions regarding this? No. No. Uh, Councilman Russell. More. <laughs> I'm going to what's get this our, line so many times. Uh, just thought, what's our uh, basis for it? Well, currently this is what we have been charging for copies and what have you. We're just, we're now going to have, with our new copy machine, the ability to add fax service. And um, the rates were based on calling private businesses and other libraries in the area to find out what they were charging and being somewhere in the middle of that. Okay. Um, so what you see there is not an increase in copies or late fees or anything like that. There's no change in those. It simply adds faxes into our fee schedule for the library. So these are comparable to other towns and what they're charging? Mm hmm Then the same Ohio high man. The fax fees? Faxing, the, the copies, oh. any of them, yeah. It's actually all quite comparable. Um, in, in fact, uh, we're, we're kind of on the low side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying, it's low. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. That's all. Council do you have any questions regarding this? No, I think it's there. Councilman Smith, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I want you to know, what's the difference between the copies and the prints? Uh, believe it or not, there has to be, we have to bring those up separately because copies are taxable, prints are what is sent to the printer from a, like a fax, like a uh, computer. So if somebody's on the internet and they want to print something, it goes to the printer. Okay, it doesn't go through the copy no. machine. No, it does not. Oh, okay. I don't um, understand that. But the way the tax code computer. is written, we pay taxes on copies, we don't pay taxes on prints. Okay, so it would be computer prints, right? Compu oh, for the most part, computers, yes. So somebody can bring something in on a flash drive, put it into the computer, and send it to the printer from there. Okay. Well, I didn't understand that it was the same. What's the difference? Okay. We have all had an opportunity to ask our questions regarding the passage 
of the uh, established fees for library service. Is there a motion at, uh, if there's no, uh, is there a motion at this time? I'll move that we accept We have fees. a motion to accept the fees from Councilwoman Tarver. Is there a second? A second. And a second by Councilman Smith. Is there any further discussion? Councilman Clay? No. Councilman Lower? Councilman Jennings? Smith? Uh, all of those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. It passed. At this time, is there a motion that we adjourn? We have a motion from Councilman Moore. Second by Councilman Jennings. All of those in favor of adjourning, please raise your hand. We are officially adjourned at 726. Thank you very much. Next, we have Session meeting to order. It is Monday, September the 23rd at 7:28. We are now at order. Number item number two on the agenda is discussion regarding the 2013-2014 fiscal year city of Van Alstine general fund budget. We will start. Budget. This was in your uh, packet. Councilman Toyber, do you have any questions regarding our, the general fund budget? We're talking about uh, admin 400. All of those Okay. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. I still am looking at the salaries uh, that was given to us, I would like to see a change in the salaries and I, if I looked at, as I looked at them, I saw the 1% uh, pay for performance and I think that would be, uh, if the people are qualified in the particular job, that uh, they should get uh, a 1% pay increase instead of whatever it is that is being suggested in the, uh, this, and that's across the board. And uh, I'm still on? Okay. And yeah, I'm just writing down <laughs> with those concerns as we did with the other. The second thing is, as I have been talking for months now, since the 83rd legislature uh, finished, uh, and they approved the law that uh, enabled us to have an electronic message board. And I uh, think that that would be most helpful for us as council members, because that way we can talk to each other and so I did Google electronic message boards and I came up with the Marlin company and it's a global leader in workplace digital signage and I spoke then to one of the company the co local company representative out of Frisco on Friday January 20th his name is William Sampson and we discussed the law as it is that was passed by the legislature. I thought we were discussing the budget. Yeah, I am. I'm wanting to add money into the budget for this electronic message board. Okay. That is your second. Question. 
concern. Do you have any other concerns uh, pertaining to the general fund budget? Do you need to know an amount at this I'll point, or? Uh, well, uh, yeah, what is the amount? Well, according to him, uh, the cost estimate is uh, $3,204 for a 47-inch uh, LED screen, uh, which would be in City Hall, and then $200 per month, a hosting uh, service fee, and uh, that comes to uh, a $5,604 to be added to the 2014 administrative budget. Okay. Do you have any other concerns regarding the general fund budget? No. Uh, yeah, um, I do. I am still concerned about the purchase of all the vehicles that uh, is being requested. And I, uh, when we get to buyer EMS, I can go along with the purchase of an ambulance, but I do not concur with the uh, fire engine and all the other things that are uh, being requested. And the same thing holds true with public works. I don't think that we should purchase everything all in one year. I think that can be uh, graduated over a period of years uh, rather than purchasing all at once. Uh, we have to think of, you know, or let's say one third of the equipment, the most important equipment being purchased. And uh, that, you know, we have to think of our citizens. I mean, are we going to drive the city into bankruptcy with this spending? I just uh, cannot go along with this excessive spending. Okay. Those are your three concerns. I have noted those. Councilman Smith, do you have any concerns or questions regarding the general fund? I the same, the same concerns I've had in the past of increasing salaries, and salary increases, increased the cost of the city. Um, I'm not in favor of buying something new. We're going to have the trade in paid out there, which will be the fire truck. And I think people like to easily make a, a justice wish list from a million dollars down to a third of that. There's no doubt the equipment's needed. There, 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 there's no doubt. But the fact that we're going to mortgage two pieces of equipment as it currently stands, two pickups for 10 years, and they will not last 10 years. Those two assets will be gone before the notes pay off. And I, I think that is, is very poor economics. Appreciation term on vehicles is it seven years? It was seven years. It was seven years. I, you know, I think at a maximum we need to look at debt expense at being seven years. Uh, that is a concern. Anything, that's, anything at debt that takes you longer than appreciation. Um, salaries. Uh, I think I've I've looked at the two percent. Look at the three percent. I think one percent is unreasonable. Today's cost of living and, and the quality of, of staff that we have and that we want to maintain in the city. Uh, 
final head issue for the salary increases at the what to present it. I think it's a good budget. Uh, and I definitely understand that trying to take advantage of the low interest rates, and I think that's wise because, uh, and I do understand we're not trying to get everything that we need, we're trying to get the ones we need the worst. Uh, so I don't have a problem with any of that. I, I guess I would fall in line with uh, Jim and John with about the depreciation. And, Maybe we should look at the vehicles not exceeding that seven years. But other than that, I'm very happy. Councilman Clay. I think staff has done an excellent job on the budget this year. And I, like most people, would like to Pay, pay our personnel less, but I think we have to pay them more to keep them here and, and, and working hard. And I think they're doing a good job. I I don't know about the, the, the vehicles. Where, 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 I, I, do, do they, what, what is the expected lifespan on the, things you're, on the things you're buying? Are they going to be 10 years? Are they going to be 4 years or 5 years? Or? It's almost a long time. I mean, we've got road road right now that's 30 years old. Yeah, yeah, so some of the stuff on the list was yeah. longer term and some of it's not. The trucks, do they get lots of miles on them or they just wear out fast? I think uh, one I drive, what are your models, right? You're going two door? Two door. Two door. Four years old? Four years old, it's only got 30,000 miles on it. Okay, so it should last 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I don't have a problem with the depreciation either. Going to ten loans, so one times two three quarter and one three uh, But I've got an operator now at the wastewater plant. I'm like moving them down there, so that's not okay. So is the one you drive the one with the least amount of mileage on it? I think so. It's the newest. Yeah, it's the newest. So that's the one you're talking about is the newest. Okay. Each person has had an opportunity to express their concerns. And as I did before, I will go back and if you have something you would like to make a motion for, then I will be asking for a motion. No motions. This is still feeling Friday's. No, oh, okay. motion. No motion. This is getting Every getting the feeling from council and and finding getting anything that y'all want to refine. This is this is what we're on the general front. Okay. And what we? Oh, yeah. Okay. I would like to pass out the information that I did gather. Uh, on the electronic message board to uh, the council members. I have no problem since we have no motion. Thank you. Okay. 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 okay, we have uh, the concerns uh, that they have written down. We have the concerns for Councilman Smith, which is uh, the salary. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Fire truck, uh, not purchasing it. Uh, the Department of Public Works would like to see the budget down and uh, did not like the mortgage for the pickups being a 10 year mortgage. Is that correct? Okay, and for Councilman Harbor, it was the uh, salary across the board. She would like to see the 1% pay for pay performance, number two, the electronic mass messaging board, and she has passed out information on that, and the purchase of the vehicles, she does not think they should all be purchased at one time, but gradually over several years. Is that correct? Right, and as far as fire in us, I think only the ambulance, I'm not sure that we need to fight 
purchase a new fire truck at this time, or a manned car, or the other things. I think right now, in the situation the city is in, uh, we can, yeah, just the airport, we can uh, make do. Okay, uh, Councilman Jennings. Uh, and the Department of Public Works is concerned about the long-term debt on the vehicles at the maximum limit. Instead of 10 years, should be seven, uh, seven, seven should maximum should be a seven-year loan. Is that correct? Okay, um, Councilman Moore, he agrees uh, that the vehicle should not exceed the seven-year loan. Councilman Clay has no uh, concerns and is satisfied. Those are the concerns that have been voiced by the council. Are we talking about everybody's part of the general fund? No, we're just talking about the, uh, we're still on number two. <coughs> we're just going for the general fund right Some now. Of that is, is okay. Uh, if there are no other comments, Council wishes to make at this time regarding the general fund budget. Then we will go to item. Okay. I don't understand what's happening here. Are we, are we, are we, are we directing them to do anything? Yeah, I was going to say, what about the message board? Do we want them to readjust the budget in that here? We cannot do a budget. We cannot do a motion. This is simply a discussion to let them know what your concerns are and that I assume they are going to uh, look at those but concerns. But if you've got one person, that's not the council. Yeah, we, we need to have some sort of a thing to direct them that, that does indicate how many people are in favor of something. Okay, but it is only listed as discussion. I'll ask their attorney. Each, each person can discuss their position on the suggested changes or request for the purpose of staff getting some direction of what to put into the document to present to you on Friday to vote on. Okay, okay. and this if I'm right. October's request for the funds for the message board, everyone <coughs> else could discuss their thoughts on that and so then staff could hear but it, is, but it is just to the discussion. Just, yes. just like we've been doing, is, is modified, we've modified the budget. Where we are right now is the consensus and the feeling from council since we're not voting. And so the issues that we're going to, on the, on the feeling is the message board, is the feeling from council something that y'all want to implement and, and incorporate into the budget? Uh, we heard what your notes are, which are the message board, the find that seven year and re reanalyzation on the trucks for seven years. Um, what, was, what was the percentage? What was the percentage? What was the feeling of council as far as percentage of increase on so, salaries? So what you're asking me to do is poll the council. Feeling yes. Do I do that? Yes. Poll that's what the we. Council that's what we've been doing. Well, to ask them each to discuss whether they support any of this. Oh, okay. We'll go back again. One of the concerns is the long-term debt on the back vehicle, but it's in 10 years, it should be a maximum of seven years. Do you have any comments on that to just get back in regard to that? The set, no, I don't have a problem with considering that. Councilman Smith needs to be considered. Councilman Jennings? Okay. On that. Okay, I'm taking one thing at a time. That's all I know to do. Long term debt on the vehicles, the maximum should be seven years. Would you like for that to be looked into? And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm carrying that over. That's, that's the enterprise fund. That's my fault. We're on the general fund. So that, that it, don't strike it out. Just hold on to it until we get over the enterprise fund. It's just we, we carried the conversation over. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm not trying to frustrate you. I'm just trying to keep some track. Okay. Then there was a concern about, uh, I had two concerns, uh, I think, 
one uh, the salary and the uh, purchasing of a fire truck and land car and 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 well that was on yours. Yeah. Oh, his, yeah. his was just the, the fire truck, so I'll include those two. Uh, what is your uh, fire truck? Mm -hmm. So, um, you, you are uh, opposed to that yes. fire truck. Uh, Councilman Smith, I believe, you are opposed to the fire truck, and that would be removed from, you're suggesting that would be removed from the budget. Uh, Councilman Jennings, what is your view on the fire truck? I think the fire truck is a need for the citizens and a risk that we don't need to take in the to provide a service to our community. As explained to us by Chief Smith and City Manager Frank Lake. Uh, Councilman Murray. Same. Councilman Plate. I'm in favor of keeping the fire truck in the budget. Okay, then we have a suggestion that the Department of Public Works uh, lower... That's no, wrong. No, wrong that's wrong. 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 Three, four. We voted tonight. We didn't we vote. Back. We're not voting but according to the attorney. I am polling the council. But the city manager and staff will keep that in there. Is that is that a fair assumption on what this happened here? The feeling was that you know no change as far as the fire truck is concerned or, or any of that equipment. Okay. But it's so, not a fact. So what what's the feeling on changes on the general fund side? Uh, okay. We have the electronic missing uh, Can I? And you were in favor of uh, research on that? Yes, I am in favor of research on that because uh, Senate Bill 1297 was passed by the 83rd Legislature and it was signed by our governor that in order uh, to uh, improve the Open Meetings Act so that council members can communicate with one another before an open meeting or before a meeting that we can discuss issues uh, as long as it is available to the public uh, through this electronic message board and it would facilitate our uh, understanding of the issues that are coming up or the things to be discussed and it would make things uh, not as much well we can understand each other better and come to better uh, decisions and conclusions. So your suggestion is that the staff check into this? Yes. Department. What is your view on that? Mm -hmm. And add the funding into the... What is budget. your opinion on that? Council? I, I don't see a problem at all adding funding to it. I know there's some questions that, that have come up even though it's a legitimate bill that was passed by, by the state. There's still questions about violations of both the Meeting Act and several things that would probably play out in the courts. Um, I don't think it would hurt to have it in the budget. So once the scenarios are explained to us, we'll be prepared for it. And Councilman Jennings. Uh, for $5,600, I, I, I don't see an issue trying to add it in the budget. So there will be a cut made somewhere else to accommodate that. I'm not sure the actual benefit to it at this point, but um, I think it can be considered budget by here. Councilman Miller. Well, there's, I hear there's a lot of issues still. A lot of them revolving around legal. Uh, I just, I'm not opposed to adding money for it, but I'm going to be opposed to using it if there's any risk to the city. So, and I don't want money being taken 
from what we're... I guess my question is, where would the money come from? Since we were already working with the balance budget, we would well, need to get... Currently, that's a good question. Uh, currently, we're working surplus on the general fund side, thirteen thousand four sixty four ninety nine. So, we're looking at keeping our revenue above expenditures, right around right under eight thousand. So that's seventy eight hundred. I'm not opposed to uh, putting it in the budget, but I would definitely want it to go to a council vote to be a system that we utilized once we have gotten through the legal hurdles and council is comfortable. We're going to, I mean, we'll keep asking about it. We'll keep looking at it. Uh, TML is real hesitant for him to recommend anybody doing it. Um, you know, we can buy the screen and, and throw it up there in City Hall. Um, well, I think what they're talking about now is putting the money in the budget. That's, well, that's, that's fine. I mean, we we'll, still have one councilman's opinion. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Flood. Uh, I think it's not that it's a waste of time to put it in the budget. I don't think that this is particularly a product. From reading a little bit about it, it's a non censored use of this system and a way of making maybe coming up with what you think you want. So that's not a good enough thing to balance out against the laws and the new changes. I agree that the laws are going to change and, and and they're going to interpret them in courts, and that'll all be something that'll have to be sorted out. And I wouldn't, pre I wouldn't prefer us being the legal battles to go sort them out and, make, and figure out whether they're right or wrong. Uh, as far as need, if we decided later that we they actually came up with some system that was going to work, there's no problem with them coming back to council and adding adding that to the budget and and, and coming up with money for it. So I don't see that it needs to be in a budget for. Who, who knows what this will end up costing one way or the other. It may end up being $10,000, it may end up being $500. So I think until we know what we're actually, when, when we go get a truck, they come into us and tell us, this is what we want to bid on, this is what we want to buy. I'd like to see the same thing with this. Just, this is this, what we would what, be what, buying. Oh, this would be what we would buying? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm definitely against it then because it doesn't look like this would do what we want to do. Yeah. And it, we don't know that it would be legal to do what they're something like this. And you have, uh, you have uh, four councilmen that have no problem with having it in the budget and one opposed. And that's polling, not voting. Uh, I believe that's covered all of the issues except for the enterprising fund. Am I correct? <coughs> uh, okay. Salaries were to join. Okay. We, did uh, we did have, uh, I have a no problem with salaries issue um, salaries okay uh, Councilman Tarman Tarper Toyber yeah. Yeah. Uh, yours was a 1% pay for performance uh, where do you stand salary wise Councilman Smith and yours is a freeze on the salary Councilman Jennings I'm fine that it's presented by the budget. And Councilman North? I'm fine that it's presented in budget. Councilman Flake? I'm fine with the way it's presented in budget. The majority of them are fine with the salaries as presented. Is there any items that I have left out? Now, I do have one question about since the uh, salary increases are supposedly uh, in the current budget proposal uh, for performance, does that mean the individual must be qualified and have all the training necessary in that job? That's, that's what we did in job descriptions and that's what we went out for the salary scale and survey is to, to place people in, in the correct positions. Well, again, I uh, whenever you did the salary scale, uh, including uh, University Park in Dallas was not a comparable to our salary uh, to our community and I do not think that the salary scales are appropriate uh, if you look at the University Park it's an outlier 
it wasn't even included. If you look at the mean, median, and mode of the salary scale as it was presented to council, it doesn't include the University Park. So if you go back and look at the job position and you look at University Park, you're right. It's it's not applicable. It's not in there. But it tells you what was what what the what, where we grabbed. It but it didn't include some of the local. Uh, communities because I know last year I had had the salaries and I gave them to the former mayor and they were not incorporated this year in the uh, salary scales. We, we didn't update it this year, right? I know you. <laughs> yeah, I know you didn't. That's my concern that it was not updated and does not give a realistic or a true local community uh, feeling for. Uh, salaries. Well, when we did that, we sent it out to all the communities around us that fit that demographic, not fit the demographic, but fit the, the population and the job position scale, and they weren't required to respond back to us. Well, I have them. Okay. You know, and, and like I said, I turned them in once for white right and uh, the uh, Island Point and Bonham and Howe. And those cities were not included in this uh, comparison. And I said, I did have them, I did turn them in, and they were not incorporated. And I think that we have an unfair, or a, a, maybe not unfair, but a not valid or uh, current uh, evaluation of the salaries. And then what you're talking about is the salary. Yes. Do you have a concern with the salary? they wanted to match their job description. Okay, that's been uh, I, Do you think the salary needs a one day salary update? Uh, no, and I would not agree to having somebody turn in numbers okay. to them to be a part of the survey because it needs to be coming, the survey results need to come from city manager to city manager or somebody that's, because you can always get, you know, write up from somebody that say this is what I thought it was. I, I have a, a question regarding that. I, I haven't seen it, but on that, it, it does part of the uh, pay performance does have to deal with the fact that each person would meet the requirements of their job and that they are they are receiving the training for that. That is how it would be. And if they don't bother to get the certification and they don't. Okay. Uh, that concludes our discussion on the Valentine General Fund. So we had three that uh, agreed that we could uh, look at an update for the local community. So you only have, you know, you have one update, a freeze, that agreed to freeze, and one and and three that had no problem with it. I thought John had no problem with an update. No problem with the way Oh, okay, no problem. I misunderstood. Okay. So that concludes the discussion regarding the 2013-2014 fiscal year City of Valentine general fund budget. We go to item three. Discussion regarding 2013-2014 fiscal year City of Valentine enterprise fund budget now we get back to the other okay we'll do it in the dark the same in the same the enterprise will be done in the same way you see what uh, council's concerns are regarding the enterprise fund and we have uh, already been over in this once, but we're going to go again. And uh, let's see, Councilman Jennings, uh, you had a concern that 
pertain to the enterprise fund, which was the long-term debt. Uh, you wanted the maximum, on, uh, instead of a loan for 10 years, you wanted the maximum at seven. Would you like to uh, state that again? Yeah, I, I have no concern with the budget as presented and proposed. I would like to have consideration, I don't know how to, to go about it in that, uh, I know we've discussed with Mr. White uh, how long he could get through the year before he actually bought a truck perhaps. Um, I know the city manager has the administration of the, the budget once it's passed how those funds begin to be expended. But I would like consideration to be given in the length of time upon budget passing. Uh, expenditures that begin and particularly debt or something such as a vehicle uh, over a 10-year period. Councilman Moore, is this also a concern of yours, or are you not concerned with uh, Councilman Jennings' suggestion? Uh, I just remembered a few minutes ago one of the things that would offset this, in my opinion, as far as the, uh, the trucks, if you consider uh, diesel vehicles. Uh, I feel like I'm uh, continuing. Maybe fine. I just had a. If it, if it was a gas vehicle, I'd be con, I might be concerned with the ten year. Uh, I believe gas is what we were talking about. Uh, it's about vehicles, so I don't know. We just price gas. Because it was about three to five thousand dollars per vehicle. So, gas. Vehicles. I mean, I don't. I like John. I don't, I don't know how you really how you do it. I think it would be better uh, at a seven year versus a ten. But that's really. I mean, I. I think it's. I think the enterprise fund budget is is good the way it's written. Uh, I would accept the ten, but I'd like to see if. if I just don't know the logistics of how, what it's going to take to get it to, to do a seven. Because you have more than just vehicles in that. Yes. So we would you separate out those vehicles to a seven and then the rest of it a ten? Yes, sir. Okay. And we have water, we actually have um, uh, meters in there and that fund also. And uh, some tank repairs, well repairs. We can separate the vehicle out. It's no problem. Okay. Another thing y'all discussed, <coughs> waiting in, until we make the purchase. If vehicles and, and equipment aren't going to go up until January 1st, we're going to wait and we're gonna let, let the money accrue before we start stepping off and, and signing on notes or anything like that. So you know, that's the first thing is are we going to hold, hold true to the quotes? And where are the interest rates? Are they going to on in those interest rates in the course of the years? So, not there's not that. That gives us 90 days into this first next next year also to see where DR Horton is and where we're going in our 45 home projection for the future. It, it, it really just helping that budget. I had another developer come in last week. He said 45. He said 70, 70 could be a good number, just like over 100 was a good number a couple of weeks ago. He said 45 is a safe number, so he agreed that 45 would be all right. Um, he's currently working with some other home builders to bring them in. Because uh, kind of Daryl Horton doing that national shutdown, it's kind of soured some developers on, on keeping a relationship with him. So he said that he was, he was working in that work with other, other builders that he had previous contact with. And he said 45 was, was going to be a good safe number. Okay, back to the discussion at hand, which was 
uh, the long-term enterprise scale on the fund vehicles. Uh, and I, I got it down maximum seven uh, to look into it at seven years instead of the ten. Right? Councilman White, what is your? I don't have any problem with the ten years based on it's part of the equipment is not vehicles. Part of it's other kind of things that you want to keep around for ten years. The vehicles, the vehicles and we were I know, but it's all in the same loan. It was I mean, until he just brought his up. Uh, the other thing is, I don't think the diesels and that kind of stuff are going to save you any money in the long run. So that's that's to me that's not a good route. A lot of the uh, things like Explore, I mean, Expeditions, Ford trucks, they're lasting 150, 200 thousand miles now, with no major problems with them. So. I don't see that they're not going to make it 10 years when you average less than 10,000. We're talking about city trucks that spend their time around the city, not trucks that go out and drive on the road all the time. So, I don't know. I, I don't have any problem with the way it is right now. Okay. Of your million dollar wish list, is, is everything that you're, equipment wise, that you're going to, to buy with that money, will it? last past the 10 years time frame? Um, I think we took the mowers out. Well, you took over you took Yeah, I think I left one mower in, probably one thing. Um, safety equipment, it'd be constantly changing. But I mean, it, right now we're in violation anyway. Something happens, we're all held responsible for it. Okay, but let's let's stay on the on well, the that's, that's, part the, point that's part of the loan. Is will that that equipment will not will not last for ten years? That some of that sure, equipment? it should. I mean, good deal, it should. But I mean, of course, uh, road signs, barricades, and stuff like that. We run up. It may not last two weeks once we get it, or maybe if we go through. But I mean, we've got much sewer machine. Uh, most of those go about 20 years. If you're talking about the camera system, it's taken care of, it goes 10 to 15 years. Uh, back trailer, uh, the same way. It's uh, just got on money or something and keep it going anyway. Uh, any excavator, the same way. As a backhoe, you get 10 to 15 years out of them real easy. Uh, Spit scare. Yes, are the, the two backhoes we have now? If I could get one running, I'd be happy. But, but let's let's focus on the on the ten year thing. Yeah. How long have we had the two backhoes? How old are they? One is like seventy something, or maybe an eighty. Old John Deere is. Um, I think the other one is about ten years old. Another case. And you know, see the way that. Yeah. Between the two of them, you don't have one? The John Deere is finally laid down. Okay. Uh, it took a little money to get it up. And we've been trying to use it as much as we can. Now, is it, is it the intention to, to add to this note as we buy equipment, or are we just going to borrow the million dollars and then use that of that? But how, how does that, how, what's, what's the, the, what's the structure for that? Typically, for that, as you, as you purchase equipment, you'll be pulling from that note. Okay. So, so you borrow the million dollars and it sits there, and then you. And you if we don't, I mean, if, if we don't purchase all the all the equipment, or if we, I mean, if we don't, if we don't purchase all the equipment, or if we don't need that million dollars, then we don't pull from the full note. So, do you have a line of credit or do you have a note for the million dollars? Yeah, I mean, you have a line of credit, essentially. Because we don't have, I mean, the figures that we brought to you are rough figures. They are on, on HGAC and by board, but they do, they do have that in ready. So, they're rough figures. I mean, most of the equipment I've got works on back in uh, April, first thing in the morning, uh, 5 to 15% increase on equipment. So will you stay with a, an established figure for that 
million plus note, or will you add to it if the equipment increases in cost? Is this redundant what we do now? Do you anticipate something after you start buying this and seeing that note, that note, that line of credit eating away at that you might not need one of the suggested pieces of equipment? Uh, I mean, I know that's like putting candy in front of the kid, you know. Uh, well, not, they're going to grab it if it's there. <coughs> Most of what we're, of the big ticket items is just trying to do rehab. I mean, if we have to do that, we may have. That's what we do with them now. Right. Uh, we pay the cost of repair when we make them. We pay the cost of operation, but it's not ours. We just keep paying it. Is that renting a fairly common? Lots of rental companies I see their trucks in and delivering equipment every day. If I wanted to rent a camera system and a back truck, you're looking at seven hundred dollars an hour and six hundred dollars a day. Uh, I'm buying the phone. Uh, the back trailer is about like sixty thousand and the camera system is about uh, fifty thousand. And that camera and uh, back trailer would be used pretty much we, we have man homes we've been pointing out, we have mile boxes we have I can't tell you what shape the line's in unless I contract somebody in the camera. Is the camera something that we could um, um, uh, contract out to? Well, yeah. what's, what's it going to be? It's about uh, $500, $600 a day. Yeah. So if some other town needed a camera that didn't have one, we could, I mean, we're, we're talking about the transfers with the ambulance service where we're selling our services. Can well, we, could we, we do that? Could we, we generate income that way? Then we're competing as a contractor. We don't have a contract. Our insurance may not cover some of those seats. Is that bad? I mean, we borrow equipment, you said, we borrow equipment all the time. For we borrow it. But I mean, uh, some places, though, we can't borrow no more because we don't over borrow. I, I just, I still think that, that I might do what I do. <coughs> I, th I think you just, I think you just answered my question. You can make do with less money. I mean, you may do with no money right now, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you got and, and I'm not, yeah. I don't, I don't intend to insinuate that you're not doing a good job. But you could do a much better job with half that money or three fourths of that money than you're doing right now. I mean, in some cases, we have to just kind of it out. And of course, if we do that, we want to readjust our budget what we took out for uh, repairing it ourselves. The Texas Star Bank, their bid on, on that note was a seven million bank. That's all they would get for that. Yes, that's for me. Yes, that's as far as I said. I would like to see the size of the note reduced so it could be paid in seven years no matter who we finance it with. So we will have equipment that we can carry forward when it's paid for that we'll have something that we don't have to, that, 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 that will be ours and we'll be, we'll be paid for. If you have to drop <coughs> the note 200000 or 300000 and finance 700000 for seven years as opposed to a, a, a million dollars for two years, I'd, I'd rather see the payoff in seven years on, on everything. You're, you're building more equity that way. When you, when you take 10 years to pay off a, a piece of equipment, in, the, in some cases that are going to last the 10 years, um, you're not going to be happy. But that's just what it is. Well, I understand the fact that the things have been neglected, but I just don't think that in one year, we can go wrong, that we can you know, accomplish everything. I think we have to take it step by step. 
And uh, I feel that that's my obligation to the citizens of this town that we be a little more judicious and not spend everything all at once. And you think that uh, some of the purchases should be spread out over a few years? That was my initial recommendation, yes. Let me just keep it saying that uh, uh, extreme, essential, yeah, I mean, I know a lot is essential, but the most important things first, and then prioritize. Yes. want to say that I think that they're making good decisions about what they need to buy. They're not trying to buy everything that they could possibly want. And I, you know, if we're going to raise people's water rates to pay for these things, we need to start fixing some things and not just say, well, we just raised your water rates, but we're not going to really put any sewer lines in town or, or do any new things because we don't really have the money to do that. We're going to spend your, you know, spend it somewhere else. So I feel like we ought to the Community to go start fixing stuff. So, what's your opinion on uh, a maximum of seven? I don't have any problem with ten years. Going in ten years, no problem with me. Ten. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, reduce the uh, the note to pay for it in seven years. So the ten the ten years is fine with you. And uh, Councilman Miller. Do you have any comments on the purchases being spread out over the few years or reducing the note so it would be paid off in seven years or leave as it is? Uh, I'd like to leave everything as is except uh, look at the, the purchase of the vehicles over seven years. That's the only thing that I would change. Seven years, okay. Right. Councilman Jennings, do you have any more comments regarding these? I think I think Mr. Baker and the city staff have presented us with a balanced budget. I think it's a reasonable budget. I think that we allow them to do their job as the department heads and the city manager, the fire chief, the police chief, and prioritize what, what their needs are at the time. And I have no problem with the team overall. I think there's individual areas that can be looked at as far as vehicles. Is there anything else to that? Where it was the seven years for the notes payments instead of ten. I feel like I agree with Mr. Blake. I think the uh, the increase in water is fairly nominal across the board, and it's a known fact that the taxes are increasing. I have no reason. Okay. Not on this issue, but well, the yeah. enterprise fund is. Yeah. Uh, we have no more on the enterprise. No. Okay. <coughs> there are no more comments regarding the enterprise fund. In, in that case, then. Um, right, before we go away from the budget, I would like to mention one thing uh, we had discussed last time, and this is general and enterprise, uh, or at least. The employees and that we had talked about uh, getting other quotes on health care and uh, we have not been given any other information on health care costs uh, the 30 percent uh, increase is uh, I think not a, a doable amount for this city and I would like to still see other uh, 
proposals or other options that do not include uh, such a large increase in the health care costs. We still haven't received, we've handed over the paperwork for Edna to our broker. They haven't, Edna hasn't come back to the comprehensive quote. Uh, they told us if the census didn't change, we could see a savings. Uh, we've, we've added a, uh, an officer, there's been an officer change over the police department. There's also, uh, we have a COBRA employee former employee that's on COBRA. So as soon as we get something back from it, we can look at see if we're gonna have any savings, we could possibly make that change. But currently, again, TML would not bid. Blue Cross Blue Shield was the best option. The only other option where we could potentially see savings was with that. So as soon as we get the information back from it. There are no other uh, health care providers that uh, you went out to other than our broker looked at the network. And the only thing that would come back that would be comfortable would be Aetna. And Aetna is a step below Blue Cross Blue Shield. But most providers still accept that. But as far as getting the quote back, she hasn't gotten the quote back. Can we sort of jazz her? She said we're a small fish in a big pond. All the big cities are doing the same thing we're doing. We're in line. We're at the back of the line. Answers the question, but not satisfactorily. I think that's about the best way to get us an answer. You, you know, you can't get something if they don't get it. <laughs> that's right. So that concludes the enterprise fund. From that, uh, in accordance with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, open meetings while the City Council may meet and close the executive session pursuant to applicable laws. I uh, now declare a regular agenda closed and we will take a five minute break and go into executive session. There will be no, there is no motion afterwards. So, we are, uh, there isn't a place to adjourn, so we are just going to take the five minutes.
out of right on the boat. That was my year. No, I wasn't here. Uh, and Jack the that was the, um, I don't shoot. I was going to tell you what that was, but I haven't gotten to it. But I, that wasn't the football. That wasn't the football mascot. That was the school's uh, emblem. This, oh, uh, Julie. Now this is the I put in here all of these, and then I did recopy by it. I put in the this because it was part of it. I also put in the original one, which I did not fill out. I put in the one that was filled out, and I put in the one that you will see. And I'm that I didn't know if you said each one individually or how you did it. It's only different to you, but then it just took a moment. I told the point that we're receiving. Now, I do want to receive 